of C major, which uh, has three notes. Uh, all these chords have just three notes. Uh, some of those notes get repeated in different octaves. So we have a C, E, and G, and then a C, E. We can add a G on top. If you're doing a, a little arpeggio, excuse me. Okay. So now that G could also go in the bass. Refinger it. Uh, now, why would you use a G in the bass? Sometimes we have uh, what's called a 6-4 chord. That is, above that bass note, we add the interval of a fourth. Uh, C, uh, G, A, B, C. So let's see. There's a G and there's a C. And the 6 is uh, G, A, B, C, D, E. And that could be the first string open. So we've got a G in the bass, a C, and an E. Could uh, do that down here, G, C, E. See that? G, C, and an E there in the fourth string. So that's the C major chord with the G in the bass. The top three strings with that C. That's a C chord. Um, the th say the three notes, uh, C, G, but also E. Now, this low E, the sixth string, could be the root of the chord. We could have a C major. We got a C here, a third string open, a G, and an E in the bass. And when we would use that C, well, we would use that if we we're maybe going to an F. So that bass just goes E to F. And then maybe a 6 4. A G chord to a C. So there's kind of movements uh, we'd be looking at. So C major has a, a number of uh, uh, formations in that uh, first position area. Of course, there's more formations as we move up the neck. But uh, you get some interesting C chords. Um, here's a, a G, an E on the fourth string, and a C. That's a C chord. Normally you have it here. We could have it with the E in the bass here on the fourth string. Okay, so even though it's just a C chord and there are only three notes, uh, there are quite a number of different formations we could have of it. Uh, the next chord is D minor, which has uh, three notes. It's got a D, an F, and an A. Uh, we could put that F in, in the bottom and have the D and the A on the second and third string. You'll see me using my thumb occasionally. I could use just as easily do it this way. Okay, like this. Um, now that's very common for that D minor chord to come in that first inversion with the, the F in the bass. So try and get used to that. And it's great coming up from that C chord. Um, let me think. Uh, where am I? Uh, there's a C with an E in the bass. Um, there's a bit of a movement there, so it's the D minor, uh, the E and the F in the bass. Okay. Uh, we have that F maybe on the fourth string, and you get a little triangle shape here. Yeah. So we've got F, A, D. Uh, all these chords you'll find quite common in uh, the 19th century literature. Uh, next chord, E minor, uh, standard way of playing it, two fingers. We could have a G on top. It's made up of three notes, E, G and B. Um, you could have it open strings. You can have the E, G a third string, and B the second. That's the E minor. Uh, we could have a G on the sixth string and a B and an E next to it. Like that. Different fingering. Uh, we could have G, E, and then the open second string and a B. We could have that G in the bass and the top two strings open. So lots of different E minors that uh, we can look at and use when we're improvising or analyzing uh, studies and pieces uh, of the period. 
Um, so we had E minor. Next one is F. Now, earlier on, I played it this way. But you'll find with Giuliani and Diabelli, uh, they like that open A string. F chord consists of three notes, F, A, C. So that A could be an open string. You could do it this way. Uh, you could have it this way. You could have a six string chord, which goes F, A, F, A, C, F. So that's with that open A. You'll find that a lot in Diabelli, especially. Um, we could have uh, just those three notes there. We could have that, F, A, C. And you, know, you try and figure out a few more. The next chord is G, or G7. There's an F. If we count up seven notes from G, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. There's an F note, so we just add an F to that chord. It means getting rid of the, the G at the top here. That's okay. We've got a G in the bass and a G on the third string. So we can afford to get rid of one of them. An alternative is to have that F on the fourth string. Oops. <laughs> a bit bluesy there. Uh, here we are. Now what do I have? I've got a G, B, F, and a G. I can maybe have a D up there. Um, there's a nice G7. That's G, B, F, G, D. Uh, very often you see this three note chord. It's F, G open, and D. Falling to a C chord with an E in the bass there. Important. We look at lots of different G chord, G7. Hold on. That's what I get for changing strings. And there's a, a G7. We got a G, open G, a D, and an F. Or that second string could be open. And that's a nice little movement. If we got a G7, we could go to the C. A, explore that. A minor is the next chord, um, made up of A, C and E. Now I could have the top three strings. I could play this A down an octave, so I just have a C and an E on top. Okay. Um, very often it comes in first inversion, so we have a C in the bass, E and A. C. We could have a C, A, and the open string, first string open, E, that's A minor. Uh, we could have an E in the bass uh, with an A and C on top. Uh, we could have an A in the uh, fifth fret, the stri sixth string, C, E. Maybe even with the, the A doubled at the octave on the third string. So you often get that. Um, next chord was B diminished. Now this is an interesting chord because um, if we look at the notes of B, F and D, if we play that open G string in between, we get G7. Now B diminished and G7 are so close, uh, they belong to the same family and they have a similar function, a dominant function usually goes to the tonic. Okay. Um, so the B diminished tends not to get played. Don't think of it as the diminished seventh, which would have an A flat. Now that A flat is not in the key of C. So if we're just purely looking at the key of C major, it's a, a diminished, a three note diminished chord. Okay. Um, uh, let me think. Uh, you could have that in a different version so that B could be up an octave. Again, it's, you know, it's so close to a G7. Just add that B and G in the bass. So interchangeable. Uh, and that's uh, the second stage over. Um, 
the third stage uh, is how to connect all these chords. We have to look at voice leading. We've looked a little bit of that G7 going to C. Uh, the main thing is if there's a note that's common between the two chords, you try and keep it still. Um, if there's a note that's a semitone away from the next chord, uh, then you try and connect those two notes. Uh, so this is called voice leading, is get uh, as smooth a voice leading as possible between these things. Of course, sometimes you want a, a giant leap, um, and then you can uh, look at some different voicing there. Um, what I'd like to look at now is uh, a modulation between all these chords.